My name is Paula Infantino Long, and I'm about to interview Rita Gottlich Pyle. We're at her home at 349 2nd Avenue in Garwood, which is in Union County, on March 19, 2012. And I'm very honored to be able to uh, interview Rita and have her take the time to uh, share her family history with us. So I'll start with the basic question. Um, when did your family or you came to Westfield? Can you tell us a little bit how your family came to Westfield? Um, well, they mostly lived up in uh, Stony Hill and that way. And I truly don't remember when Mom and Dad came. 19 well, it was before 1900 when they went to Downer Street oh, when right. they married. Right. Mm -hmm. And I neglected to, to uh, say that <laughs> Vicki, um, her daughter Vicki, Attic. Attic Pyle, or Vicki Pyle Attic, is here joining us and, and uh, assisting. Uh, so actually, where did your grandparents uh, originate from? Where Where is your heritage originally? What is your... Uh, from Germany? From Germany, I guess. And, yeah. Right, and the Czech Republic, yeah, right? right. Austri the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Okay. They came in the uh, 1800s. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So your parents were born... In America, they were born here. Okay, right. and then they came from wherever they, they were. They lived up in Stony Hill, Hill. and then uh, I guess they moved down into Westfield. Mm -hmm. I think, believe he did. He meet my mom up there. He, he met. He met your mom yeah. uh -huh. and got married. Yeah, in Stony Hill, and, and then that little he, old church. Yeah. Oh God. Saint Mary's. Saint Mary's. Okay, and then they came to Westfield approximately, right. what time did you, what year would that have been? When was Aunt Anna born? Well, she was born in 1900, so they came just the year before, yeah. so 1899, 1899 when they married. Right. And they, when and they, they first came, came to Westfield. In, in 1899, okay, yeah. and mm -hmm. they would have lived on Downer, da on Downer, Downer, Street. Downer Street. Okay, right. 89 Downer Street. Eight, yeah. Okay, and then um, they moved to the big home on, on Prospect, Prospect Street, mm -hmm. approximately, I think you said 1903. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you were one of many f children, I understand. You had a lot of siblings. Right. Um, um, how many? Nine? Yeah, you were the youngest. Yeah, youngest, the of, youngest, youngest of, of nine. nine. So then right. when were you born and where were you born? Were you born in a home? I, I know at that time people did, weren't in I hospitals. I think a lot of them were born at home, but I was born at Muhlenberg. Were you really? Yeah. Because I was told by someone else they had maternity houses. There was a maternity house where people might have been born. So you were born in Muhlenberg. Hospital. Well, way back then, I'm sure it was still the, at the hospital before they changed it. God knows what they did to it mm -hmm, after that. Mm -hmm. And when, would that, when was that birthday, Rita? What was that day? Uh, June 2nd, 1920, I was born. In Muhlenberg. In Muhlenberg. Okay. And I really think I was the only one born in the, in a hospital. I think all the others were born at home. Yeah, that's what, yes. Yeah. My mom was born in 1916 and she was born in the home. Yeah. In Westfield. Right. Okay. So what was it like with uh, growing up with all those siblings? Oh, it was wonderful. Huh? And my dad was so great. He, of course, we lived it was like a farm because we had a shed, we had horses and goats and an outhouse and he finally built a pool in the backyard for us and oh a my. tennis court. Oh my! <clears throat> and then he had beehives and a garden. So uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful childhood. Well now the beehives, was that something for yourself? He didn't, did he make honey and sell this or was this a personal yes, thing having no, the bees? He, he sold them. That was my mom's, um, what would you call it? Pin money? Pin money. Uh-huh. And she sold it. Was that something uncommon or com typical to have a bee colony there? Or was this something that was typical, do you know? Well, I don't know if there were a lot around then. I know <clears throat> there probably had to be, but I do remember him bringing it in, and then you would have to turn the thing to render it to get the honey out of the... Uh, Hives itself, so, you the know, cones. of the cones, mm -hmm. right? So you're saying that was pin money, but did your mom actually uh, maintain it, or your dad maintain the bees? 
Oh, my dad. Oh, it was your dad. Yeah. In addition to what else? What else? What was it? He was a mason. He was a mason. Yeah. But before you leave the beekeeping, that was a very big hobby for him. And he was so talented at it that he became an officer in the New Jersey Beekeepers Association and a speaker and lecturer. Oh, wow. Um, so you in, in so do you have any information? In, uh, it's in there. Uh, it's Vicki in there. has prepared a, a wonderful uh, family history yeah. uh, booklet, and I guess you have a lot of information about that in there. There were articles written in the New York Times and whatever mm -hmm. about uh, him speaking at groups, mm -hmm. and so people would ask him to come all over the state to speak about beekeeping. Yes. Now, how did he just learn that on his own? How did he get that knowledge? I guess you know through his association mm -hmm. with the Beekeepers mm -hmm. Association, mm -hmm. and there was he had a lot of bees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of combs, right? <laughs> a well, lot of bees. Now I'm curious if the community it's it wasn't an issue to have a bee colony in your property or not. Obviously not. It was no, okay. Not you didn't need a special permit you, or anything at that time. A lot of property. Yeah. So it was they had, and the bees were happy because you had so many fruit trees right. and. Uh, flower gardens yeah. and vegetable gardens. So of course the bees had lots to work from. Yeah, I think yeah. That, that that would have been typical at that time. Our property, yeah. we had yeah. cherry tree, we had yeah. blueberry bushes. Right, uh, right. We had we had lots of lots of fruit trees as right. well. Yeah. So well, I'm just curious, what part, what block of Prospect? How is it closer to town or away from town? It's uh, well. Um, Approximately, was it closer to, to downtown or? Well, oh no, it was up by Dudley, close to uh, Whitewood Avenue. Uh huh. Which, About a mile from town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. Something like a mile. Yeah, because I it took me a whole mile to walk over to Holy Trinity School. Mm hmm. So it was a good mile from my house. And that's where you went was Holy Trinity School mm -hmm. at, there at that time. Right. All your ch all your siblings went to Holy Trinity. Uh, right. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So I'm sure that block was not built up at all. It was when you say you were, it was farm like the whole area was oh, very yeah, very next farm like to our house all the way down to isn't that awful? I can't remember the street. Don't worry about it. I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, it was. I'm sure it was pretty yeah. much farm. It, and Brightwood Park was mm -hmm. was not called Brightwood Park at that time. I don't think, right. or was it? Oh no, 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 no. It was just a street where the bus the bus would come up Prospect Street. Oh, they'd come up Elm Street, I think, and then come over Quimby. Maybe it was Quimby. Ah, oh, Quimby. And was it Quimby? I think you're right. I think yeah. it was Quimby. Mom. And then up Prospect Street to Brightwood mm -hmm. Avenue, and then turn left to go to Scotch Plains. So <clears throat> you say buses, but were there, were there trolleys when you were very young growing oh, yes, up? And do you recall trolleys. riding the trolleys? Right. There were trolleys then. But I came honestly say how they came up, but I would imagine they came the same way that the buses came. Mm -hmm. You know, up Elm Street and across Quimby and up Prospect. Yeah, I think they kind of picked up the same route uh, yeah. that the trolleys did. I, I have seen some pictures of the trolleys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you remember going on the trolleys and, and riding oh, yeah. on the trolleys? Right. Yeah, that must have been <laughs> fun. Fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but even, um, that was even fun when you had to have get to school and get to church. Oh, yeah. Now, did the trolley go to where Holy Trinity was? No, oh, no, 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 no. That was just the main roads in town. Yeah, right. right, right. So um, you did a lot of walking, I'm sure, at that time, oh, yeah, although many, I, many I don't know if you had... It took me. I would walk down Prospect Street, and I think we would take a shortcut over the railroad tracks where the, the um, station is now. Mm -hmm. You know, I think maybe they had a little huddle there. Well, I think it was a big thing when they did raise the train. That, right. that was a major project. I don't know when year that what year that would have been, right. but you would have the tracks were were lower, right? Ground level, right? Right. So we went over there, and uh, what was my? Question? But when you went to church, um, your dad pulled out the truck, right? The old Model oh, T yeah. truck. You know, with the seats along the the back seat, the rumble seat. Yeah. No, they weren't rumble seats, were they? Oh, I don't know. I well, just he, when he, you have the seat in the back. Yeah, it was like yeah. a yeah. He he put in seats, seats in the back on the uh -huh. side for yeah. all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. And then. Uh, and in the winter time. Winter time, then my brother would hook up the horse sleigh and take us to school. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, how would you all fit in this car? You certainly didn't all able to travel at once in this car. 
nine people. How, you how all do you, fit in the... Did, did you? Well, some in of them were truck. married by then. Uncle Bud was anyway. Oh, could be. Yeah. Yeah. But years ago, you'd just pile in the back of that oh, truck yeah. on top of one another. You wouldn't think anything of that, of, you know. <laughs> Sitting on one another's laps. Sit on laps. my lap yeah. now or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of, of sitting on each other's laps, I mean, I would imagine your home didn't have a bedroom for everyone. You probably all shared space, right? I mean, nine siblings, that, that would have been something you would have shared bedroom space, right? Or, or not? Um, what was the house? Well, I was very lucky. Because <laughs> you were last. Everyone in somewhere back, gone. <laughs> you know, you would come in in the bedroom like this, and then you could go. And I had, there was a... a what do you call it? The chute with the clothes? The laundry chute. Laundry chute. Ah, yeah, wonderful there. laundry chute. And my bedroom was like this. You guys had the rest. <laughs> yeah, but your brothers like all slept like in bunk, bunk beds? Yeah, in, in the, the front? front of the house, my brothers slept there. And uh, see, I don't know too much because by the time I got older, my older brothers were married and out of the house. Right, right. Right. So, did you and have sisters though? Were you four, his you oldest sister? Her older sister, oldest sister, almost was your mom, almost in a sense. Oh yeah, she's twenty years older than and, mom. And, oh, that that biggest. Well, with nine yeah. children, you would think yeah, the spread she, would be pretty wide. She kind of raised mm -hmm. me in a sense because my mom was so busy with canning and everything else. And of course, back then we had a <clears throat> a summer house where you would do the canning. Ninety degrees, you're sweating, but you still have to peel. Peaches and can them. <laughs> and that was also pretty typical, though, at that time, oh, right? People, when you say canning, not jarring, but canning. I, I don't even well, know how it you was, would... They were jars, you know, but and they would have to be uh, boiled and bleached, mm -hmm. and then you would put the fruit in it with a little top and the other top and screw it. Quite, quite a process. They didn't just run down the Trader Joe's like we do now, right? <laughs> right. I mean, this is... So this is what your mom was pretty much doing that right so what are your really strongest memories though in that growing up period what would you say was your with your with your siblings and your parents what what was your strongest memories of growing up in Westfield I what, guess did, were there music in the home did anyone play instruments were there sports what what was what was the the thrust I don't of think my brothers had much sports I was, too much work to do on the farm. So it really was the time of farming and where all of the children needed to participate. Oh, what, what did you do for pin money? Oh. <laughs> I got five cents a row for squashing little bugs on the bushes. On the beans. <laughs> on, on the, the bean beans plants, or right? whatever yeah. they were. So that's the first beginning of an allowance. That <laughs> right. they, they gave allowance to everyone. <laughs> all of the... Right. Your, <laughs> so they didn't just feel you had to do it. They gave you no Well, I think that's... Yeah. <laughs> and somebody said, five cents? I said, that was a lot of money oh, then. Oh, I'm sure it was. You'd I'm save sure it, it you know. And then you'd wait for... I think that even back then they had that good humor truck that came around. Well, I remember the good humor truck, but I'm younger. But was right. there a good humor truck at that time? was something because we would, oh, one thing I know, we waited for the man to come with ice. And he, ch I said, he would chip us a little before he'd take it into my mother, you know. And we we were thrilled with having a piece of ice like this to suck. <laughs> well, I see now, I'm, I should know, but I don't know when refrigeration really came in. So you had, you had an ice box for a long oh, time. Oh, yes. Did you have things like a bread man deliver things? What, what, did that happen at that time? Um, what, was there? Well, you had a root cellar down in our basement. That I guess it was cold that they would put things down in buckets, mm -hmm. you know, to keep mm -hmm. it cold. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious if there was any services. I, I know in the f what would it have been the 40s and 50s? Uh, my father had a fruit and vegetable stand and he drove around and sold fruits and vegetables. Yeah. I don't know if there was anything, any services. How did you obtain your certain, were there milk deliveries at that time? Um, probably, yeah. Early. Yes, yes, we did, because I remember the cream, cream gum and so high mm -hmm, on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, uh, Dunkin', not Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, Dugan's. 
Dugans. Dugans I, wasn't Dugans. Somebody came around. It began with a D. Well, there was your Vicky. I remember Dugans. I don't know if that's who it was. Yeah, but, but you, your mom did a lot of baking. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, she did. All, she made the bread and all this, you know. Yeah. Can you remember a point when things started getting easier? When did, was you? Did you have the farm? As until you were in your teens, or or was it always oh. a farm? Because your dad, when did he start doing the mason uh, business? That I don't. He must have done it before I was. You know. He did. Did he? From the beginning, when he moved to Westfield, he worked with Frazee first of all. Oh, he did. And then he started his own business. There were so many houses in Westfield mm -hmm. that he did. Yeah. You know, the fireplaces would not build the house, but mm -hmm. he would go and do the fireplaces. Or he, yeah, he had his own business. The Charles E. Gottlich, um, he was a mason contractor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your brothers worked with yeah. him, too. And um, so he did the mountainside uh, town hall, the first mountainside town hall. He did the, all the masonry for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he did foundations for houses up right. and down... Uh, a number of streets there um, that I, I think I wrote some of the names down, but anyhow, yeah. So he they had a, he had a big business. He had a pretty successful. Benny had that yeah. for until he went to off to the service. No, oh, not no. no. Dad didn't go to bed in service. No, this is her father. Oh, this is her father. Oh. This is her father, Charles. Oh, so it's your husband that went. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's Pyle. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was okay. Charles who had the Mason contracting right. business. Yeah. And then um, her oldest brother Bud was in it, and um, Paul was in it until he went away to the war. Right. War. And then Babe was in it as well. Yeah, but Ed went into electric. Uh, uh, the plumbing. Plumbing, and it's different. Right. So her brother Ed started a plumbing business, which he kept going until he died. Yeah. So your dad stayed as a mason in the mason business till he retired. Did he retire? That's what he did until he stopped working. I would say so. Yes, yeah. he did. Yes, right. He, did. he passed yeah. it on to yeah. uh, his sons. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Uncle uh -huh. Babe took it. That's right. Uh huh. So they made a lot of contributions to the buildings in town. Oh yeah. So involved in in many of the buildings. A light to that and the Catholic Church. I think he put a a window in. And what else? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Holy Trinity Church, you're the talking Holy about Trinity Church. Church. Yeah, he installed the window. I know you said there is a stained glass. So Vicky had uh, explained there's a stained glass window in there. Well, no, he they paid for it. They and paid it says for the gift window. from yeah. gift from uh, Charles and Mary Ann Gottlieb. But um, he, as uh, Bobby was telling me last night on the phone, uh, my cousin Bob, that um, that your dad. And uh, Henry Townsend were the ones who um, the pa the pastor uh, Monsignor, and he was I think Father Watterson at the time, Holy Trinity, um, because they were such successful businessmen. He tapped the two of them and said, "Will you help me raise money uh, to to build a school?" And and the, and so they were the spearheads for building Holy Trinity School. That was your grand my mom's father, mom's dad, and then you mentioned another person? Henry Townsend. Oh, Henry who Townsend owned, owned a moving and storage yes, company. Yes, ve yes, right. very famous. Mr. Right, I know yeah. the Townsend so moving. they were the the principal businessmen in the parish mm. that he could tap. Very good. That's, yeah. that's, that's pretty significant. That oh, was yeah. one of my questions. Um, any contributions to the history, and that's certainly very important to the to the. Being yeah, involved right. in, in the fundraising—that's right. always something that's necessary. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your dad was a trustee of Holy Trinity he, Parish. Yes. He was a whole, Bobby said he was a full yeah. trustee. See? So, very good, excellent. Yeah. That's that's very important. And the so. other thing that was m memorialized in their bulletin was that your flower, your dad's flower gardens were so big that every year, every week, they would take a truckload of flowers to Holy Trinity Church. Uh, to decorate the altars. Oh wow, that's see, you should interview. Well, but this is this is okay. But this is good. This is good. I think this is very sweet that we're having the two of you filling in. You're, you're very lucky to have uh, your mom okay. till ninety two. 
Well, Mom remembered a lot of this and helped me track it down because uh -huh. I've been doing it for so many years. Yeah. And, <laughs> and as I get older, you know, it just. Well, you're still you're doing you're doing great. Who needs to row it then. <laughs> but, so uh, you would certainly were parishioners of Holy Trinity Church. Um, that's obvious, right? Since yeah. you were so involved, and you had all all of your. Uh, Sacraments and all your ch and, all your and right. siblings. You were even married there. Hmm? You were even married there. Yes, I, I was I would, married. I would right? imagine yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to just uh, before we move away from the family in general in, in terms of meals and food and did you eat dinner together? Was that typical to eat dinner together? Although some of them had married and moved on. Right. But um, for the most part, I'm sure you you had meals together and ate right. together. Right. And I do one thing I do remember. You had to have soup. It could be 90 degrees, 100 <laughs> degrees, but you had to have soup as your first course. Well, I'm sure they didn't have vegetables and fruit and salads as much as, I mean, maybe fruit, but certainly not salads. So no. you're going to start your meal with the soup, which is going to tide you. I don't think had salads. Yeah. I don't remember it as a salad. No, I wouldn't it think. Was always, you always have your meat and potatoes yes. and the vegetables. Go out in the yard and pick up some beans or peas mm -hmm. or something for our vegetable. And... Uh, I don't know. Did we ever have desserts then? I can't remember. Oh, your mom. Well, your mom baked. baked. You said your mom I'm baked. I'm sure we yeah, always did. Yeah, your did. mom yeah. baked. Okay. Puddings or something, um, maybe yeah, too, yeah. right? Probably. Yeah. And then you had you raised um, farm animals. So you had you had oh. lots of eggs and oh yeah, we pigs. had eggs had and we had pigs and of course we had the horse then, and um, well pigeons, but they they were. My one of my brothers had to make them where they were. What would you call them when they they went over there and then they would come back? The passenger pigeons, kind of thing. Yes, and uh -huh. they would take messages. Oh yeah, actually, my uncle did that also on Downer Street. He raised uh, pigeons, hom uh, homing pigeons, and he homing did that in, in the war. Uh huh. That's what he did when he was uh, serving. Uh -huh. He was in charge of of the pi carrier pigeons. Uh huh. Yeah, and he had them on, on Downer Street for the longest time. He actually, they were racing pigeons. Oh. Yeah. He he would race them. This would this would mm -hmm. have been probably in in the certainly in the forties. But he had those pigeons until he passed away. They they were just wow. part of who he was. Yeah. Well, who was in charge of the pigeons? Do you remember that? Uncle Babe. He and, was. And Uncle Ed. Yeah. Uh huh. Where did they keep them? Up in the barn. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> did they race them also or no? Did were they did they race them at that time? You know, I don't know about racing. racing. All I know is that they carried messages yeah, in the back yeah. and forth. Carrier, yeah, carrier, uh -huh. carrier, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, getting on to maybe when you were in your ten, fifteen years old, what what do you remember as a teenager? What what would what what are your memories as a teenager and any any events going on in the world at that time? Were were you even aware of things at that time? You didn't have communication as much or papers. I mean, were you aware of things in, as a teenager? Well, you what, certainly were aware of the depression. Yeah, right. Right? Actually right. That that would have been the and 20s that, and 30s. That what was, was that like? That really hit your dad. Yeah, because he had a lot of property and he lost a lot of money. And I think before he did, he took he had a place in Florida and <clears throat> He took us down on the boat. That I remember. To I, Florida? Huh? To Florida. You know, along the coast. You, you could take a boat all the way down to Florida? Yeah. And I do remember one place. They must have stopped someplace because I've always remembered this. He got off the boat because he wanted to see things. And my mother's up there. Charlie, Charlie, we're going to go with... And of course they're not going to go without him. You know, and he's down there looking at sea guns or whatever. They <laughs> and I remember that so vividly. Mm -hmm. So it was a cruise ship. It was a cruise ship then. But to Florida. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. you know, I yeah. guess they don't do that now, no. of course. <laughs> no. um, but that was, that was really quite a special thing to be oh, able to do that. Right. And then it was after that that he lost a lot of his money in his property. He lost the property in Florida. Mm. He lost property up here. And, you know, that was when the Depression right. came in. So how old would I have been? Well, you were nine years old. Nine years in, old. In yeah. 1929. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's sad. <laughs> well, but again, it, 
what hardships do you have vivid memories of things being really difficult um, in oh, terms you of used to tell me things about um, butter and all those things too right and oh, oh yeah By but maybe that was you the would war. get lard and you'd have to put some coloring in to make it yellow oh my I guess it was <laughs> lard or something I, I, no yeah. like, <laughs> just what you want on your toast right? <laughs> We didn't have Dr. Oz telling us how bad that was. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we didn't. So, and I don't know. My mother made it so easy that you never really felt it. You know what I mean? Oh, isn't that nice? So so tell me about your mom then. So she, she, she never made... She always managed to have things still right. hum along. Right. You know, and I, I don't think I ever hear, heard her complain about anything mm -hmm. except... You kids get out of the house and go back in the pool and climb trees or something. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom's and your dad's family were very close-knit. So your aunts oh. and uncles and things? Oh, often. yeah. Now, where were they? Were they living in Westfield as well? No, most of them, a lot, were still up in Stony Hill, you know, on Mountain Avenue. Or, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Uncle Ed was up and we went up mm -hmm. there, remember? and. Mm -hmm. We would go up there to pick our blackberries or blueberries, I can't remember mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. in his yard. And uh, so a lot of them lived up there. And then one or the other would come down and uh, sew clothes for the family, right? Was it your mother's sister? She would uh, make clothes? Oh, Aunt Jenny? Right? I don't know where she much. I don't think she was my mother's sister. Oh, she wasn't? I, I don't know. Yeah, I think she was. An older, older, another sister. She could have been. You know, when you're so young, you should... Aunt Kate, oh, it's good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Not figuring what part of the family you come from. But, and then you know. some of them babysat, too, didn't they? Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I am going to pause this for just a minute. Okay, yeah, we were talking about uh, the family and the togetherness, uh, which was, I'm sure, very typical at that time. You spent lots of time with your family, and um, Rita's uh, aunts and uncles and would have been in uh, Stony Hill, which is now actually New Providence. Right. When she speaks of Stony Hill, it's, yeah. it's New Providence. Uh, so how would you get up there with your, with your Model T Ford, though, right? Did, did everyone have a car? Did your... Oh, most by the, by the by that time, time I was born, they had. Most people know. were able to afford a yeah, car, right? Yeah, and it was black, right? <laughs> I mean, you could get a brand new one for about two hundred dollars then. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know when Aunt Marie first got one, we were so excited about it. <laughs> so, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about um, your father serving in the war? Do you, do you have? Oh, that's my husband. Oh, your husband. I keep, forgive me for trying to keep that's track of, okay. of who's, so your dad, of course, no, he did not no. serve in the war. No. Um, so, um, but, but right. her brother Paul was the one who did. Yeah. And he, he died. He, he died. Franklin on. On the SSS Franklin. Right. Yeah. That, that must have been really difficult. Right. To, to say the least. It was rough on, especially on his wife, because they built a little house just before uh, it's Brown Avenue. Brown Avenue. Just before Scotch Plains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, he had two daughters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Barbara and Judy. Judy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was really, really hard on your parents. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it just kind of my dad went down, down, and well, after we, they came, you know, with the. T Telegram at that time. Oh yeah. Well, I think they almost. Oh, telegram. They don't knock at the door, or do they bring it? Knock it at the door. Do they bring the telegram to the door? You know, oh right? yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They always it to them. But there was only one that went. I mean, you had nine, eight siblings, so it's only one that served. Right. Which was a good thing in a way. Right. right? Yeah. Um, your brother Ed was in. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it, but. It was uh, a support um, group that, that is that. What do you call those oh, guards gosh, that we remember. had? Them yeah, on. national the national, national guards. guards. National guard. Oh, national guard at that time. Yeah. I guess they had that too. Yeah, and for air raids and things like yeah. that, they right. were all called out. Mm -hmm. And um, the one who became the plumber, he was very active mm -hmm, in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, right. 
Yeah, but that was later on where you couldn't have any lights on okay. in the house because I remember with my husband overseas, I could go in. In our house, we had a front steps and the back steps, and I could go in there with a candle and write to him it because you couldn't have lights on, your blinds were down. Mm -hmm. and Tell us a little more about that. I, I remember that, but people would be interested to hear specifics about that, that yeah. you couldn't have your lights on. Right. Um, and, and what other always, restrictions? Were there other restrictions? Right, and they always had somebody going around and then you couldn't even have a crack in the wind, you know. And uh, they were very tight about not showing any light to the, who are they, Germans? Was I that guess. the whole time? That would have been the whole time of the war? Was, was that a long time that you had to do that? It seemed like a long, long time. time to me, mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, Difficult times, to say the least, and, and we unfortunately still have so much war, you would think we could yeah. learn from it. Right. There were other sacrifices you had to make during the war. Oh yeah, with shoes, you couldn't get shoes, you know, uh, and tires, and I think, I can't think of the other things that you weren't able to get. But the re gasoline was really strictly right. rationed. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. And how about the stockings? Oh, stockings, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was when they were silk stockings, <laughs> before they got the other... <laughs> the nylon. Nylons, <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm sure there was uh, rations of that, right? Right. <laughs> And, and you were working during those war years as well as volunteering. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Well, tell me when, so when you, uh, how old would you have been now? When you were uh, in, in 29, she was young, she was nine, and, and no, no, now we're talking 1914. So and now she, we're talking about the 19, war, 19, World War II, two, around 1914. and mom was uh, um, 23. Right. When, um, um, Dad was Daddy drafted married. in the right. war, and I was born. And my mother took care of Vicky because I would wor I had I was working for a doctor, and then at night I would go at the hospitals and work as an, an aide, you know, to oh change dressings and fluff up pillows mm -hmm. and whatever. So you worked right after high school. Did you start to work or did you go no, right to after high school? I went into New York to Payne Hall Institute to uh, to learn, you know, how to doctors. And then I worked for Dr. Kalb. Kalb for two or three years, I guess. And so what is the Payne Institute then? So you did have some higher education, oh, yeah. which was... This was that you got a certificate in medical technology, yeah. medical and x-ray technology. Would that have been typical at that time for for a woman to have the opportunity to have yes, training? Yes, because I wanted to be a nurse and my father wouldn't let me. <laughs> because like your so. sister was. Because my sister was, and he says, you're not going to be another one empty in bedpans, you know, at that time. It's a very different if you were a registered nurse, you still change bedpans and stuff. But did he support going to school? He obviously did. Well, he, he, he supported Payne Hall, which I went into New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I got the certificate, and when I came back, I was able to work for doctors. That's, I think that's amazing that you could go to the city on your own, right? right. You were able to go to New York and go to this institute right and then I would have to go down to the train and I guess I guess we must have got this the bus I can't even remember how I got down there <laughs> well it might have been either way like now perhaps it were both uh, I don't wait know wait a minute the bus is very possible that I could get to Newark or some isn't that funny See, don't get my age because then you, you forget <laughs> things. Did, did you? So you don't know if you took the bus and changed or took the train. That but, I'm sorry, but, but I can't remember. I think it's just amazing that you went into New York and this was yeah. approximately how. Do you recall how long right. you did, you studied for this certificate? Oh yeah, okay. for a whole year. A whole year. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then I went in and it was kind of fun living. I had friends, I made a lot of friends, you know, that stayed in New York. And uh, then she came out when I, on 
weekends with me or mm -hmm. something. So, um, well, I think that's great. You had that opportunity at that time. Yeah. Because you don't, you know, women. I think, but coming from a community like Westfield, I think women were had more opportunities as far as mm -hmm. education. Yeah. You know. Well, you, I think your sister B kind of paved the way, didn't she, in a sense, because. She went to nursing school? She was a nurse, and that was when my dad said, you can't be a nurse. And I said, well, I want to do something. <clears throat> so she said, you know, figured out all these things that I could do. And then when I found Pain Hall and went there, then I was on my own. But Was your mom on your side there in terms of trying to su support the cause to go on to for further education? I oh. mean, your, your dad wasn't opposed to it, he just didn't want another nurse. Just didn't want me <laughs> to be a nurse. That, that was fine. And then during the war, I can remember so many times driving down to Fort Dix and picking up soldiers that were come, had been at mom's and would take them down. I would be pick you up today, and, you know, nowadays. And I didn't think anything of it. And I'd go down there and work on the canteens after work and then drive back. <laughs> well, see, my brother, my uh, uncles were in Fort Dix, uh -huh. uh, yeah. but they would have been um, a, a little bit old. Did you know anybody named Matino? Did you know the name Matino? No, I don't remember okay. any okay. of them. Okay. Yeah. What they, did you do down uh, down there at the canteen? What kind of volunteer work did you do at the oh, canteen? Oh, then you would give them um, hot drinks and something, you know. And dance with them? Dance with oh, them. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Thought so. I was yeah. going to ask that, yeah. <laughs> what Was Dad jealous? He wasn't around. <laughs> She was, was over in India. He was over in India. Yeah. And here you are trying to comfort these GIs, mm -hmm. right. right? Absolutely. And that's what you did. You went to the canteen <laughs> right. and danced. That's that's what right. that that was always what happened. And it was a uh, my mother would say, You're not gonna drive down there and I had this green car, but green car <laughs> that I would drive down and then pick up people coming back. <laughs> Today they'd call that hitchhiking, right? <laughs> right. So you drove down by yourself. Oh yeah. Oh well, that's 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 great. <laughs> she was thrilled to have her own car. car. You were very I, privileged, right? I I would say I'd say your family was really pretty progressive. I would say. Yeah. Your, Mom was probably home saying the rosary or something, <laughs> but I was got there anyway. <laughs> tell tell Paula about uh, you when you got your car in high school and how. You would give the kids rides. Oh, God, yeah. When I was in high school, and you're all my friends, okay? And we're going to go someplace to get a soda or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, you each have to give me a nickel for gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were smart. You were not a businesswoman, but why shouldn't you take If you guys want to ride, <laughs> then you're going to pay. <laughs> good for you. That's good for you. But I'd say your family really did well overall if you were able to have a car. Yeah. Uh, you were fortunate that your dad did make a good living. Yeah. And that, mm -hmm. that's very good. Um, so do you want to share anything about when your husband was in India? Is there anything? Uh, how long was he there? Do you know how long he was there? Um, and how did that leave years. you? You had your three, children. Three had, years. You yeah. have how many children? I don't know how you how many well, besides. Mom, mom only had me okay. until dad came back. Okay. And then when he came back, we bought this place, and then I got pregnant with my first son. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then I had the other kids after we Okay. <laughs> but you so, had, so, so, you wrote back and forth every day to Dad, didn't you? And um, he wrote back to uh, you? yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, Do you and still have them? Some I of have letters? some of them, yeah. Yeah, because my, my mom wrote my her brothers, and there are none of those letters, so it, it's wonderful if you do have yeah, some of those letters. So. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. you have to make sure you put that with your other yeah. papers here. Yeah, <laughs> and, that's, and you sent pictures back and forth all the time of how I was growing up. Yeah, and, and I got a lot of pictures of, of Daddy because they had, uh, what did they call it, R&R? &R? Mm-hmm. So rest how long, rest and relaxation. relaxation. How long was he there then? How long was he uh, serving? I guess you, about was, how many years? About three years. Oh, yeah. wow. A long That's time a long time, and they separated. didn't send them back. No, you know, you didn't get leave to come home. Not at that no. time. Can so that's imagine? very difficult. Oh, now your yeah. parents were around, though, right? They were still living. Your parents, so you had them oh, as yeah, support, they and they were living in 
still on Prospect? On Prospect yeah. Street. Yeah, so right. that's, they weren't a plane right away. Right. They were They were nearby. Yeah, uh, and... Uh, Otherwise, nobody would be taking care of me. She was working. She was volunteering. Yeah. Oh, honey, it's good it to was, see you. I'm leaving. <laughs> my she was a modern woman. My <laughs> nanny and grandpa brought me yeah. up for three years. <laughs> and then when my husband came home, my uh, father made her like a little princess, and my husband was, ah, this is my daughter. <laughs> back for just a minute to your um, father uh, who was a trustee at Trinity um, was there anything else he was a part of any other organizations that we would want to just document to say was he uh, Knights of Columbus you know was he, Knights of Columbus. He, he was in the Knights of Columbus oh, so he was active in that and, and degree wrote, yeah. I don't think they had rotary at that time but what other any other um, associations that he would have done in the town Ho the Holy Name Society the, the Holy, Holy, the Holy, Holy Name, Name Society, Society at Holy Trinity. Right. And he marched every year in the Holy Name oh. Parade from Elizabeth. Right. We have pictures of him oh, marching wonderful. in the parade. So he, yeah. he, he, was an act, he was very active in the community. He was yeah. very active. And after you would come up up Warnica Park or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you pass that and come here. And then sometimes they ended over here for some reason. Maybe the... I remember oh. cheering those parades on. Oh, my. yeah. So now your mom, of course, at that time, there weren't opportunities for her to volunteer. She was just always taking care of the children and, and you having the mom's mom. to the farm. Yes. Marianne. Oh, well, she was involved, too. She was involved in uh, the church organizations, the Catholic Daughters. Oh, yeah. And... Um, the, uh, let me see, the Rosary Society. Oh, so they, they were very and active. And there was also the Women's Benevolent Society. And she was active in all of those. Yeah. Because now getting forward, forth forwarding to where you were, so when Vicki was born and your husband was overseas, you were working and you were also starting volunteering. You yeah. started being yeah. involved. Yeah. Right. right. What, were your friends, was this typical for women to be doing this? Or is this something you wanted to do? No, um... Catherine A.K. Townsend was involved with a lot of this, too. Okay. So there, it wasn't untypical. Oh, no. Women at, like, Westfield is a very active oh, yeah, we people involved things. in volunteering, right. so it was pretty vibrant then That's right. to be involved and, mm -hmm. and volunteer and work. I mean, it's like I say, you were, you were a modern woman at that time to be doing working and Well, I and can thank my mother for that. Minding Vicky because other I wouldn't have been able to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you wanted to though. You, oh you, yeah, you, you, I wanted you had to. the interest to volunteer, and um, I know that you was it was a master gardener. I don't know when you would have started that. Was that later after your children were all gone? Oh or? yes, yes. Yeah. So so along the way, then you were involved in um, the church. Where, where did you volunteer when you were when Vicky was young? Well, we mom and dad both got, when, when they bought this house, they got involved in the parish right here. Okay. St. Anne's right. Parish mm -hmm. in Garwood. Mm -hmm. And they got very involved in yeah. St. Anne's mm -hmm. Parish. Right, Mom? Right. He, dad would sing in the choir, and then he would also, uh, they had bingo over in the school. Mm -hmm. And he worked there, and I worked in the kitchen, you know, over there because... Everybody that was being bingo needed a hot dog or something, mm -hmm. so I worked in that, where he was on the floor doing other things. <laughs> and in addition to uh, rearing all of us, uh, the six children, Mom also was working uh, on working jobs on the side. So because it was very very hard to um, support a large family and oh yes, and when those. they were all finally got them all in school, I would go out and do housework, but I had to be, if I was doing it for you, I'd had to be home by three o'clock so that I was there for the children. So you had six children? Huh? Did You had six children? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm that's, the oldest of six. Right? That's yeah. right. And, and then, um, mom, I don't remember how you first got involved with, um, the artist, Joe Dolly. Do you remember that? Yes, because I was house cleaning with a woman next door to Joe Dolly. 
and uh, he said he needed somebody as uh, to help him, not as a housekeeper, you know, as cleaning houses. And then I worked for him, mixing his paints and doing things like that, uh, taking his paintings up to Connecticut sometime. Oh, you Ten, did? Yeah. Take them up to Connecticut? $10,000 paintings that I would put in a station wagon that he had. You're amazing. <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, you were a little, little fearless flyer here, driving to <laughs> Connecticut delivering car park. She was basically his right arm. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. So, that, so did you stop doing the house cleaning when you did that? Oh, as that soon was, as I went in with him, I didn't do any more oh, house cleaning. Oh, that's, that was, that was yeah. great. Yeah, that was a much more interesting, Yeah, much and more then pleasant. when he decided to open his own gallery, then I was down at his gallery, and I, we were on North Avenue for a while. In Westfield? No, in Cranford. In Cranford. So tell, say the name, the full name again of this artist. Dolly, D-A-W-L-E-Y. And he had a gallery, Joseph, with, what was it Joseph called? Dolly. Was it called right. that? The Dolly. The Dolly yeah. Gallery? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Now, I never asked you how you met your husband. Um, would you want to just talk a little bit about where he was from? And how you he, met him? He was from uh, Cranford. Okay. And I met him on a blind date. And uh, I thought, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't love at first sight. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's so funny. <laughs> and then he called me up, and then of course we started, and before you knew it, we were, oh, and that was a thing I have to tell you. <laughs> on Christmas Eve, we went up to. Um, Stony Hill Church, and he says, give me your hand. He puts my engagement ring on it, drew in mess. <laughs> and I, you can't say, oh, I can't say anything in the middle of mess. <laughs> <laughs> that was his plan. <laughs> oh, that's so oh, romantic. That's very, it was fun. So were you expecting that? Did no, he catch you off, he caught you off guard? I mean, we were going together, but I mean, we never talked to you about marriage or anything. Uh, so he was pretty confident you were right. going to say yes, I guess, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> He was assuming a lot there. No, he lived over on Fourth Avenue in in Cranford. Uh huh. And uh, then, as I say, after we got married, we bought this tiny little dump. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cozy, and it, it's you were able to raise all your children yeah. here. It was a flat top yeah, yeah. when we got it, yeah. and then uh, it stayed this way because you. You had that bedroom. Right away you had to add on because there, that bedroom wasn't even there. That Only the sewing room was the bedroom. Right. So you started adding on as soon as you built it, as soon as you yeah, bought it. Yeah, because we had to make our kitchen bigger. Yeah, so they started, the two of them were a team. They'd right. lay cinder block and put up uh, sheetrock, right mom? Oh yeah. I'm holding up pieces. Well, hold it higher. Here's my stomach sticking out. I'm eight months pregnant. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and we never put up sheetrock before. And we would do it every two inches. You know, and you don't have to <laughs> too do many nails. <laughs> well, now, what did your husband do for a living? Oh, he, were, he was a... Um, linotype operator. I, linotype operator for the New York Sun in New York. Say that. Say it again. A linotype operator. A li oh, linotype. He, he okay. set the print. Set the okay. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, after the New York Sun, he went to the uh, the journal. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Daily, Daily Journal. journal. Okay. okay. And then it be just became the. And then then they went over here to another, and I can't remember that. But anyway. Yeah. So until his retirement, he yeah. worked for the journal. Okay. Very mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So then tell me when you did become involved um, with the Master Gardener. That was v recent or was uh, about what time did you uh, oh my goodness. get involved with the Master Gardener? After he died, right? Oh yeah, after he died. Uh -huh. And he died in 75. Mm -hmm. So it was right then I went up there and... Uh, because you obviously always have liked gardening. <laughs> Outside you have very level, lots of plants and flowers. And um, then I guess through the Westfield High School, uh, not Westfield, remember they always had classes in the, uh, 
ago. What was that old building on North Avenue? Oh, the, um, you mean the gardener, the, the master gardener? Yeah. Yeah. They well, just, not where they are, not not that fancy one. Well, they, the one next door. When the they one. were flat buildings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's where, that's, that's, that's where, where you studied the, took yeah, all that's your classes. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And then you had to volunteer a lot after that. And then after that, then I got up to Miller Corey and I don't know other places. You what know. was the what, what did you do up at Wachung Reservation? Was it Wachung Reservation or where you helped in some of the master gardener kind of stuff? No. Oh yeah, we went up there. I forgot about that. <laughs> and then you helped plant in, in all the communities? You yeah, helped. yeah, right. And so does the Master Gardener actually find uh, situations for you? That's how you got to Miller Corey and, and they, they give you, not assignments, but they let you know of needs where they need yeah, you. Yeah, you'd call, go up and say, you know, do you need somebody? Mm -hmm. So then they gave me the herb garden, you know, and then if it got too much, then we, I'd say, Vicki, you belong to it too. Come on up, I need it. <laughs> You know, I'm working other because there's a lot of gardening there up at Miller Quarry. Oh yeah, I know. I'm I'm part of the historic well, yeah. the historical society is part of Miller Quarry, and that they yeah. today still they need so many volunteers. Right. Yeah, right, that's, so. that that was a lot to do that. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah, that's yeah. You that's, were in charge of that herb garden for many years, and yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah, right. So would you call what would you consider your your highlights and your major accomplishments of, in your life and the most rewarding things that you've done? Raising all my kids. <laughs> I, I think most moms would say that. It, 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 it truly is. Right. Uh, you, mm -hmm. Your proudest accomplishments. I'm but so but proud. along the way, you certainly did many things. Mom yeah. did many artistic things, too, which we remember oh. as children. She, yeah, I could show her the things in the bedroom. Want me to bring one out? Yeah, bring them out. Now, whose artwork is this that I'm looking up on the wall? That's my son-in-law. Uh-huh. He's yeah. a, um, a He's freelance a illustrator. Oh. Who um, work? Who does illustrations? He did it for the New York Times, the New Yorker magazine. All of these uh, no, pieces. No, no, these, are, these are dolls. You know, they're uh, they're all when I was in the artist. You know, you would bring your paintings in just mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. me to sell at the gallery, mm -hmm. and I would always buy one. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, I, I love art too. So it's it's uh, yeah, it, it's a, it's a great appreciation. Now, do you have grandchildren, Rita? Uh, I have nine grandchildren, nine grandchildren. and I think six great children. I can't keep track anymore. That's great grandchildren. Oh, did they all live nearby? Uh, no, like Vicky's son lives in Detroit, and then I have. Oh, I, this is some of the things. Mom got involved in um, doing a whole lot of these oh, kind isn't of that lovely. This ceramic is we're looking at. Actually, form the flowers. Yeah. And we're looking at yeah. a lovely piece, uh, a tray with the uh, ceramic flowers. Very, very beautiful. Which you did this at I this gentleman's that. gallery? No, you yeah. did this, uh, you took a class on her own. Before. Before. Yeah. Before I would that. just get this frame, and then I got the, what is this, 14 karat gold, gold. on here. Mm -hmm. And then, because my kids remember it in there. We have to go quiet. Mom's working on. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, because. The, to do all of these, you have to, you know, nobody can shake you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's very so involved. Formed, the she flowers. She formed all the flowers. Yeah, right. Very detailed. The yeah, flowers, and the, right. and you painted the gold on your. I'm I, sure you did yeah, that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where would you have done that? In, uh, in a, in a, not a studio, but somewhere. Where, who offered this? Where were you able to do this? You know, good question. Not adult school. <laughs> Certainly, this is pretty involved. You had to go where you had a kiln, and you can, yeah. you know, actually fire this. Yeah. It's it's very involved and very lovely. Did you do others? Oh, loads of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. you've got See, really a lot of artistic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's she even did sculpting, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That little head over there, I did, and then. This little I, figure. And I have another one downstairs. And now, who else has this artistic talent? Did any did your parents or any of your siblings? Are you Not the only parents. one with this art artisticness? Yeah. See. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So she's yeah. she's 
She has the uh, artist in her. <laughs> well, as I may have said, I've always been involved in the arts. I was an arts administrator, uh -huh. so I, I feel the arts are just so important. Yes. And you, you, so you've left a lot of nice things for to pass on. Yeah. And and Dad was um, in his own field. He took voice lessons, oh. and he was also um, in dramatic presentations. He was a soloist. Uh, uh, That's and a, yeah, he sang at uh, mass every. Sunday, right, and, yes, he solo and, and he soloed for uh, weddings and funerals, right. and he was in musical productions and yeah. sang uh, even opera. Yeah, and they had a lot of plays back then, over in in the pu uh, public school here, in dramatic clubs, mm -hmm. and he was always in that. So, so you've been always in involved in the community and active. Right, that, that's really important. Yeah. Would you say that's? Uh, Part of what is uh, important in, in reaching age 92. <laughs> what, what would you say is, is words of wisdom for people listening to this as to longevity? Do you have any? Yes. Get off your seat and get up and do something. <laughs> Work in the yard. Do anything that keeps you happy and busy. That's, you know. <laughs> but that's, that's great. I can't wait till I can get out in the backyard, you know. And then she says, to manicure, when I go get a pedicure, I said, don't, no, 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 no. I said, you would give me a manicure and in five minutes I'm there digging up dirt because I don't <laughs> like gloves. <laughs> oh my, you work in the dirt without gloves? Oh, I can't stand oh gloves. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I want to know. She's, she's tough, Vicky, right? She, she is tough. working on the farm. <laughs> and we were sitting together talking, you know, it was we were talking about the state of the nation and politics and the state of the state. And Mom was saying something or other about, I called up the senator the other day, didn't she tell me? <laughs> well, you should. You absolutely yes, all need to speak and up. She does. And I, I said, Mom, good for you. Absolutely. It's very important to stay involved in this and be interested. Do you really? That's she absolutely, does. absolutely important important no <laughs> I mean from, from your perspective of where we were and where we are now I mean w would you want to just comment politically <laughs> and whatnot I mean it's you, you we all need to have uh, people speak up and well if you think it's a right cause let people know about it and get behind it and push it that's all I mean I don't know how else to explain yeah. it yeah and don't we have to though we, yeah. we, we yeah. really do I, I was happy with Occupy Wall Street but I don't know that it's been effective but <laughs> You know, we, we need to uh, be more involved, and it's amazing. See, you're still doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Being a responsible a citizen. She's example yes. to us. Yes. You yeah. know, you, you get these little posters, and they say, well, we're working on this and that. So I'll call them up and say, well, yes, you know, they want the, your input. And I tell them I'm for you. Go ahead. I'll be behind you. <laughs> well, you're a, you're a good role model for your grandchildren as well, and and your children, but your grandchildren. Yeah, yes, that's she that, is. that's great. And now she has great grandchildren, don't you, mom? Yeah, I told her. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. says how many grandchildren, and then I counted them up. I said six grandchildren, and then what do I have? Every time I turn, somebody else is having another baby. Oh, I know. It's at like yeah. five or six great-grandchildren uh, I have at this point. Quite a point. few. Yes, you can't, quite you a can't few. have a better blessing than that. That's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. So how can we close? What would you like to close? We, we asked you, and you, you, you said, you know, get off your duff and stay busy, and I believe in that. Um, what else would you like to be remembered, most remembered for? Oh, I don't know. Just... Be happy and love everybody, you know, strangers, whatever. don't worry about race, color, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all I can say. Yeah. Just <laughs> don't let things get you down. Yeah, because life can be tough, but right. it's also great and beautiful. Just mm -hmm. think about the nice things exactly. that can happen, you know. Well, I thank you very much for taking the time, and uh, Vicki, thank you for initiating oh, this. Welcome. I'm so and glad Mom had a chance yeah, to yeah, share. Yeah. Right. I, I hope it helps. Well, and we will hopefully have a copy um, and share it with you. We'll Wonderful. have a copy right. for you. Wonderful. Okay.